today is Wednesday, April something. Um, I thought I would bring you along for uh, a normal workday from when I get an idea and then kind of what happens <laughs> and the process and the result. And today is April 6th. And uh, I can see the angle is not perfect, but that's okay because um, what I wanted to share actually is how I get an idea for a color of yarn and then what is the next step. Because sometimes I just play with colors in the little studio and magic happens and sometimes magic turns to trash. That's just the way it is. But uh, other times I will just get inspired by something I see on TV or a color combination somewhere or somebody's t-shirt and it can differ. Uh, last night I was watching on Netflix a show called Animals of Color or something like that. Um, and it's just kind of this really slow, lovely show about animals and how they use really bright colors to attract a female or to scare off um, male uh, competitors or whatever the birds or spiders or whatever use um, their colors for in nature. And there was a little, actually there was so many animals that I want to die, but the first mm -hmm. one that I thought of was a flamingo. And I'm not a huge animal person in a way that I know very much about different species. I know that there's a bird called the flamingo. I know it gets its color from eating uh, these tiny shrimps that has this color, this pigment that gives them the color. What I didn't know is that there are so many different species of flamingos. And that is where this uh, little project <laughs> and this little vlog is going to start because uh, on my computer, of course, when I, I start to think uh, about a color, a flamingo, what I want to do first is kind of do my research. And so, of course, I will go and type in flamingo. And while I'm doing this, record, I will record what I'm doing on my computer at the same time so that I can actually show you uh, what's going on. So. Maybe I'll do a split screen. Maybe I'll just cut from me talking and <laughs> to the uh, to what I'm searching on the computer. But what you can see here and what I can see here is that there are so many different types of flamingos. Actually, if I write flamingo um, species instead, you can see here that there are actually so many different kinds, all depending from where in the world they are from. Um, bad example, another bad example. Um, but as you can see on the map, flamingos come from different places of the world and all, depending on where they come from, their color will be different. So for me, my first thought of a flamingo is like these, uh, orangey coral kinds of kind of colors um, but um, the flamingo that I saw on TV yesterday was more of uh, this kind of flamingo which kind of goes from pink to white and the one I saw on TV yesterday I even think it was this one that James's flamingo which has like pink and it has some yellow on the what is that called uh, this this out here, I don't, I don't remember what that's called in English. So I will search for James's flamingo because I think that is the one I saw on TV yesterday. And as you can see on this picture, it has yellow here on the, I need to look up what that's called in English. Hold on. The beak, okay. So uh, here on the beak, you can see yellow, some red, Here's some pink and then kind of like a speckle, some white and some more of the pink on the back. In this picture, you can kind of tell more that it goes from pink to a speck to a white and then more coral or dark pink at the, at the tail. So this, actually this 
flamingo right here is very close to what I saw on the show yesterday. So kind of a baby pink here, some yellow, some black, some speck, some white, some coral. So this right here is really what I want to go for today when I go to the dye studio. So an idea, some research, really looking at the colors on a screen so that I really know like this picture here. Hold on. It was the mailman. He just uh, stepped by to bring me my yarn so we can be dyeing some more yarn. And I actually ordered some new bases. So I'm very, very excited about that. But first let look, let's look at this James's Flamingo. This is what we're going to do. Well, you're not, but I am. <laughs> I want to try to make the James Flamingo. And maybe we can do like a whole flamingo family and uh, try out some of the other species another day. This is how some of my ideas just kind of roll. <laughs> I get an idea about a flamingo. I saw another bird that I want to do. Then I go, should I make like a whole bird collection? Should we do a bird collection in mini skeins? And just now thinking about all these pieces of flamingos, I'm thinking, huh, maybe we should do like a flamingo family with all the... I don't know how many species of flamingos there are, maybe five or seven or something like that. So, but anyway, this is going to be very boring if it's just me sitting here on my computer talking about colors. Let's go to the dye studio. So I will shut down this little recording on my screen and uh, take you with me to the dye studio. Before we can dye the yarn, we have to soak it in water. And what I do is that I put one of these, I don't know what they're called in English, strips on the yarn. This is only so I can manage when they are in the little dye pod and when I hang them to dry. It's just nice to know that this skein is kind of, we got this under control. So since this is a trial, I'm not gonna soak six skeins of yarn. Usually I'll soak six skeins and I will dye six skeins, three in each bath, and then I'll do exact this, the exact same thing in both of the dye pots. But since this is a little uh, experiment, the James's Flamingo experiment, I'm just gonna start out with three colors. Not three colors, three skeins of yarn. And also because I have to go to work a little later today, <laughs> I don't have time to do all that yarn. So I'll just soak these three. And when they have been soaking for 20 minutes, I will take them up and I will uh, show you what is the next step. Actually, while the yarn is soaking, um, I think I will mix the colors and have them kind of ready in a different uh, cans. No, not a can. Measuring cup. Yeah. So that when the yarn is done, soaking. I will have the, all the colors ready and we can kind of play around. So I will do that first. I think what I want is um, three, three colors. I want like a baby pink, soft baby pink, baby kind, <laughs> baby kind, not a baby kind, baby um, pink for what was like the neck of the flamingo. And then I want at the end something a little bit more coral and i was playing with coral coral <laughs> earlier this morning so i found a combination that i like so i think i'll mix those two colors and in the middle of those i want to speckle and i'm indecisive of exactly what color i want to speckle with because uh, when you speckle the yarn you can't mix and make your own color you can only do that with solids because you can put the powder in one cup, mix it up with water, and you can make your own color. But when you speckle, uh, the colors can break. So if you speckle with green, it can kind of break into blue and yellow. So specks are a little tricky. So I need to be sure that the specks I use is actually close to the color that I want. And that is where the experiment happens because I'm not 100% sure how the specks are going to work. So we will see about that. And also, I'm not sure if I want the speckling technique that I'm going to use, but sometimes I just decide in the last minute, we will see. So first, I will be uh, doing these um, colors. And 
I think I will mix the baby pink one in this um, this measuring cup right here and I will just mix the colors I put my mask on and that way I can talk so I'll just be back once I have mixed all the colors so I have now mixed all the colors the yarn still needs to soak a little bit but let me show you so except for this which is my coffee I have all my colors ready here the one on the right is uh, the baby pink that I want over here we have the coral it looks very dark some yellow in uh, this one here I have some extra uh, this is a flamingo pink that I will try and spiggle a little bit with this and then I have some black in here which has already been mixed with um, citric acid so that I can kind of sprinkle this and some yellow so now all we need is to put some yarn in this uh, dye pot over here and work our magic. I actually haven't decided exactly how I'm going to apply the colors. If I want the yellow to be kind of in the middle or on top or whatever. So we will have to see what happens. between a little baby pink and here where I want the beak I wanted this to be very bright yellow and with the black specks this is not right now looking the way I wanted to I wanted the black to be um, I don't know it kind of fades a little bit into the yellow kind of making like a purple greenish um, transition there 
but sometimes it's just so hard to know in advance sometimes once you wash it and hang it up it looks fabulous so we will have to wait and see but um the pink the speck the coral i'm really happy about that i'm gonna let this sit for a little bit so i'm just 100 percent sure that once i turn the yarn around the black is not going to go all over the place and ruin everything so i really just want to turn the heat back on put a little extra uh, citric acid right here in this area to make sure that the color would really stick to the yarn so i'm just going to do that now and i will be back once we are ready to flip the yarn over and dye the other side heat for a little bit longer and I'll keep an eye on it and then once I think uh, it's had enough I will turn it off and then maybe tonight or tomorrow it will have cooled down completely for us to wash and rinse and dry so uh, yeah for you it'll take a second for me it'll take a little bit longer so the yarn is uh, in the dye pot and um, just uh, chilling out a little bit on a little heat for the color to kind of stick to the yarn perfectly. It takes uh, heat and acid, so we need to leave it there for it to, uh, we make sure that it will kind of soak all the color that's in the water. So we actually want water that's totally clear so that all the color I put in the water, the yarn will absorb. So I will get ready to go to work and uh, maybe I should just show you how insane the weather is today. Because even though it is April and the weather is supposed to be real nice, this is what's happening in Denmark today. Can you see? We have snow. And only two weeks ago, I was with some friends at a cafe and we had wine outside in the sun. So that is just how crazy it is here. Sometimes it does snow in April. I'll get ready. I'll get to work. And I will see you a little bit later when we have to deal with the James Flamingo yarn. I just got back from work. It's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. Let's go check out the yarn because uh, hopefully it will be cool enough to um, kind of wash, <laughs> wash the yarn. But let me just show you what it looks like now. So here we go. It's actually pretty cold and I think it's um, it's looking better than I 
I kind of feared a little bit, is that the right word? I was worried. I had concerns about this area of the black just kind of going into the pink and if the yellow was going to be yellow enough. And actually it looks like the yellow kind of went a little bit orange, which is actually good because I think that's more the right color when it comes to the beak of the bird. So, so far so good. I'm actually very, very excited about the color. I would have liked it to have a little lighter area here, actually more with a white background for the specks to be more visible, but it's fine for now. I can see up here that we have some lighter areas at the bottom. And uh, once we dry this, I'm sure it will be great. So for the first try to do the James Flamingo, I think we're on track. And then the next time I will see if I can make sure to make like a lighter area here with the more visible specks, like dark specks on white is actually what I wanted. But sometimes it's hard to stop. Once you start pouring the dye, you just kind of want to keep pouring dye into the bath. So yeah, so far so good. So let's rinse the yarn. I think I can put you back up here. You're actually on top of my microwave, but who cares? If I flip this down a little bit, you can see the sink. It is Thursday, April 7th. I'm officially on my Easter break, which is just awesome. But our yarn uh, has completely dried. So let me just go grab that and show you how it turns out. And then we're going to twist it into a skein and just kind of see what looks the best. So hold on. Here we have skein number one, skein number two, skein number three. So uh, I'm actually quite happy with this. I think this uh, black uh, yellow part here in the middle, it's, it's so much more faded um, than when it was in the dye pot. And actually, I think that's a good thing. So you totally get the feel of the beak, the yellow and the black, but I like how it actually looks on the yarn. So now let's see what it looks like when we twist the yarn. 
Let's see if I can take you down here with me so you can see the twister. So this is what they look like when they are twisted into skeins, the beak, the neck, the tail. So uh, I think we actually uh, did a James Flamingo pretty well. So I'm really happy about the result. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little uh, this little vlog from the from the process of me getting an idea and the whole planning and execution <laughs> of color dyeing. Uh, I will put these in the web shop at some point <laughs> and they will be called James's Flamingo and uh, I will be doing more and I think maybe I'll also do a mini skin set but we will see about that. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in uh, in another episode at some point you can turn on that little bell that makes um, sure that you get a notification whenever there is a new video or a podcast or vlog from me so take care i'll see you soon bye